One of the most important properties of gases is the pressure. And the pressure is defined as being the force that is exerted by the gas divided by the area upon which that force is exerted. So we write this as F over A. Now if we have a container and we have little gas particles inside the container. A gas takes up the whole volume of the container, so it's evenly distributed. We have lots of gas particles here, and these particles are moving. And they hit the inside walls of the container, and that's the force that the gas is exerting. And so if we add up all those forces of the gas particles hitting the inside of the container, divided by the area, of the inside of the container, that's equal to the pressure. One of the earliest ways and most inventive ways of measuring pressure is called the barometer. In this case, we have a dish of some liquid, and into that dish we insert a cylinder with the opened end under the liquid, the closed end up, and in that cylinder we evacuate all the air, so we create a vacuum. All the air is removed, so air pressure is being exerted on the top of the liquid by the atmosphere, but there's no air inside this cylinder, and so there's no air weighing down or exerting a pressure on top of the liquid that's covered by the cylinder. And so what happens is this liquid inside the cylinder will rise up. So the liquid rises up inside the cylinder until the force exerted by gravity is equal to the force exerted by the pressure. This is pressure which equals force over area. So this force due to gravity because a liquid column has risen above that of the dish. When those two are equal then we'll have an equilibrium and we can measure the height, this height right here, of the liquid column inside the cylinder, and that can tell us the pressure. And I'll show you how. So pressure is equal to force divided by the area. Well, force from physics is mass times acceleration. And the only acceleration, everything's at rest, once we reach equilibrium in this cylinder. So the only um, acceleration is acceleration due to gravity pulling down upon the liquid in the cylinder. And so now I'm going to do a common trick. I'm going to multiply both the top and the bottom by the same thing. I'll multiply by the height of that liquid column. So I have mgh over area times h. So that's a common trick that we do. So in science, h over h is 1, so I haven't changed anything. I've only multiplied by 1. So the pressure is equal to mgh over, now the area times the height, the area inside the cylinder, times the height of that liquid is equal to the volume of the liquid inside the cylinder. And so um, mass over volume is equal to density. I use the Greek letter rho. So density times acceleration of gravity times the height of the liquid column. So the density and acceleration of gravity are constants. So that means the pressure is directly proportional to the height of that liquid in the cylinder. So this is a way we can measure pressure. All we have to know is the density of the liquid, which is easy to measure, and the acceleration of gravity, which is a constant. Now solving for the height, 
of the liquid inside the cylinder, I get height is equal to the pressure divided by the density of the gas and the acceleration of gravity. If I use water as my liquid, the height is equal to 10.2 meters, which equals 33 feet. So I would need a, a cylinder um, at least 33 feet high in order to measure the pressure of one atmosphere for one atmosphere and that's just the air pressure at sea level so water is not a very good liquid to use because the density is not high enough if we had a liquid with, with a very high density the height would be much less so the liquid that has been chosen is Mercury, HG is the atomic symbol for mercury, and it has a very large density. The density is equal to 13.5 grams per cubic centimeter, whereas the density for water is only 1.0 gram per cubic centimeter. So the density of mercury is almost 14 times greater that than water. So if we use for mercury, for mercury, the height of the liquid column would just be 0.752 meters or about 760 millimeters for one atmosphere pressure. This is for one bar pressure. Very close together. So this unit, millimeter of mercury, is given a special name and it's called a tor. There are 760 tor in one atmosphere pressure. Now the weathermen on TV talk about the air pressure, but they use inches of mercury instead of millimeters of mercury. So 760 millimeters of mercury is equal to 29.92 inches of mercury, and that's just the height of the mercury column. So the TV weatherman will say the barometer is 29 inches and in rising or 29 inches and in falling, depending on if we're getting a high pressure or low pressure system coming in with the weather.